Hey y'all, it's Erin with Twirling Down Main Street. If you're new to the channel, welcome, go ahead and subscribe. And if you're not new, then welcome back. This is part seven of my Walt Disney World Basics videos. If you missed parts one through six, I will link them here and down below. Today I'm going to be talking about hotels at the Walt Disney World Resort. Before I start, there are three main categories of hotel at Disney World. Deluxe, moderate, and value. Deluxe are going to be the more expensive hotels that are typically closer to the parks. Moderate resorts are kind of in the middle range for prices and same in the middle range for closeness to the parks. And value resorts are going to be the least expensive resorts, but they are going to be the furthest away from the theme parks. Resorts are also categorized by what park they're closest to or Disney Springs. So you have the Magic Kingdom Resort area, Epcot Resort area, Hollywood Studios Resort area, Animal Kingdom Resort area, and Disney Springs Resort area. So I'm going to start by talking about the deluxe resorts. Deluxe resorts typically have doors that open to the inside of a hallway. They usually have a really grand and spectacular lobby. They're usually closer to the theme parks and they usually have more than one mode of transportation. They also have more restaurant options than moderate and value resorts and typically have a few more amenities and a nicer pool area. So most of the deluxe hotels also have a DVC component to them. DVC is Disney Vacation Club. Disney Vacation Club is kind of like Disney's version of a timeshare. People that do not have DVC can rent these rooms. You can either rent DVC points or you can just pay outright for some of these rooms. These rooms are gonna be a little different because they're going to be a different layout. So DVC has a few different layouts of rooms. There's the studio, the one bedroom and the two bedroom. There's maybe even a three bedroom at some resorts, but these are gonna be if you're staying for a little longer or have multiple families staying together, it might be more cost effective for you to get one of these DVC rooms. Most of the deluxe hotels have a DVC component. It's still part of the hotel, but the rooms are blocked differently in the reservation system. And they're gonna be these different room types instead of your standard two queen or one king hotel room. So I'm gonna start with the Magic Kingdom area resorts. The first one we're gonna talk about is the Grand Floridian. This resort is gorgeous. It's across the lake from Magic Kingdom. The lobby is so grand and beautiful. It's a very, very classic resort. It kind of has a Victorian feel to it and it has several restaurants. It has the Senses Spa which we went to on our honeymoon and it was fantastic. It has quite a few gift shops as well. The transportation options are you can take a boat to Magic Kingdom, you can take the monorail, it is a monorail resort, and now there's a walkway open so you can walk to Magic Kingdom and you can take a bus to the other three parks or Disney Springs. Next, I'm gonna talk about the Polynesian. This one is my favorite hotel. It's currently being refurbished right now to be kind of rethemed towards Moana. It is a monorail resort. You can take a boat to Magic Kingdom. You can take a bus to anywhere else. And you can also walk to the transportation and ticket center, which is really nice, especially if the Epcot monorail is running because you can just walk to the TTC and it's a little quicker than taking the monorail to the TTC. You could also walk to Magic Kingdom via the new walkway that was built by the Grand Floridian, but you do have to walk to the Grand Floridian before you can walk to Magic Kingdom. So it's a little further walk from there. The Polynesian has a few restaurants that I love. It also has a to-go counter that has Dole Whip, which is really nice. You can get your Dole Whip and then go and sit along the lake. You can see fireworks from the resort and they'll pipe in the music over the speakers at the resort so you can enjoy the fireworks from a distance. I just really love the theme of this resort. It's themed to the Pacific Islands and has hints of Moana and Lilo and Stitch, which are some of my favorite movies. And so I just love this resort. The lobby is beautiful and I'm so excited to see all of the refurbishments when they're done. Next up in the Magic Kingdom Resort list is the Contemporary. This resort is the kind of weird looking one. It looks like a triangle almost. The monorail runs right through it, which is super cool. Disney just announced that it's going to be getting a refurbishment and the rooms are going to be themed more towards Incredibles. This resort is really cool. It has Chef Mickey's, which is a very popular restaurant. You can see the monorail running right through it from the lobby and it's awesome. You can take the monorail, obviously. That's probably one of the easiest modes of transportation since it's right there to Magic Kingdom and to Epcot when that reopens. 
and you can take a bus to any of the other resorts. You can also take a boat to Magic Kingdom. You can also walk to the Magic Kingdom from the Contemporary. It's just a short walk to Magic Kingdom, even shorter than the walk from the Grand Floridian. So that's definitely an option if you're staying there. The last Magic Kingdom Deluxe Resort is Wilderness Lodge. This resort is themed to the Western United States. It really reminds me of Old Faithful Inn at Yellowstone National Park. If you've been there, the interior looks like it was modeled after it, which I'm sure it was because that hotel is gorgeous. But this resort is gorgeous. I love it. It is not on a monorail, but you can take a boat to get to Magic Kingdom and a bus to get to anywhere else. Next up, we're going to talk about Epcot area deluxe hotels. First up is Beach Club, which I'm actually going to talk about Beach Club and Yacht Club kind of together because they're almost the same hotel, but they're not. But the theming is very similar. There may be some differences in theming. They do share a pool. There are some great restaurants at these hotels and they are just either a short walk to Epcot away or you can take a boat to get to Epcot or Hollywood Studios. You can even walk to Hollywood Studios, but that's going to be about a 20 minute walk. Or you can take a bus to get to Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, or Disney Springs. You can also walk from there to the Skyliner. It's just a short walk to the Epcot Skyliner, so then you can take the Skyliner to Hollywood Studios. So lots of transportation options if you're staying there. Across from Beach Club and Yacht Club is the Boardwalk. This hotel is themed to like an Atlantic Boardwalk. There's even, this is kind of a different district, kind of like Disney Springs, the Boardwalk area, because there are carnival games that you can play and there's lots of restaurant options along the boardwalk. There's a bar called Abracadabra that's really good that we've been to. I'll link that video here and down below. But the boardwalk is also a hotel. There are lots of restaurant options if you're staying at this hotel since it is on that boardwalk area. I'm going to talk about the Swan and Dolphin even though they're not owned by Disney but they are right there. They're owned by Marriott so if you're looking for a option that's less expensive than the deluxe hotels that are owned by Disney that are right there, you could stay at the Swan and Dolphin. I have tours of them and I'll link them in the description below, but we really enjoyed our stay at both the Swan and the Dolphin. The Dolphin even has its own spa, it's the Mandara Spa, and this spa was open before since the spa opened at Disney World during the pandemic. The last deluxe resort in the Epcot area is Riviera, which this is the newest Disney resort. This resort is gorgeous. It's very European themed. It has Topolino's Terrace, which is a super popular restaurant for breakfast. It has Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Daisy as a character breakfast. It has gorgeous views of almost all of Disney World. You can see parts of Epcot, you can see Hollywood Studios, you can even see over to Animal Kingdom. And this resort is a Skyliner resort. So you can hop on a Skyliner, take it to Epcot or Hollywood Studios, and you can take bus transportation to any of the other resorts. The only deluxe resort in the Animal Kingdom area is the Animal Kingdom Lodge. This hotel is split into two parts with the DVC area actually being separate from the normal room area, but you can still, again, stay in that DVC area. It's called Kidani Village if you want to, or the main area is the Jumbo House. This hotel has four different savannas that there are animals at, actually, and you can go out. If you have a balcony that has a savanna view, you can view the animals from your room, even. If you don't have a savanna view room, you can also go down to the lobby and there are viewing areas from there, and there's usually an animal expert that will talk to you about the animals and point out things that you might not have noticed on your own. It has some fantastic restaurants, great pools. We really liked it because it was far away from everything. That is the downside. It is about a 20 minute bus ride to Magic Kingdom because that's the furthest resort away. It was like a five minute bus ride to Animal Kingdom because that was what it's close to, but it felt less hustle and bustle than some of the monorail resorts. You will need to take bus transportation. This is the only deluxe resort that doesn't have more than one form of transportation. It just has bus transportation. So you do need to take a bus to get to every park or Disney Springs. Next up is the Disney Springs Resort Deluxe Hotels. First up is Old Key West. Old Key West is DVC only, but again, People that aren't DVC can stay there either by renting DVC points or you can just buy the rooms outright. So it will only have the studio or villa type of rooms. This is nice if you're staying with multiple people. This resort is pretty big, so it's a long walk to get from the lobby to your room, but there's plenty of parking if you want to drive your car to get up there. It has a couple of restaurants that are great. It's themed to Key West, hence the name Old Key West. And it's a really relaxing resort. They have bikes you can rent and it's really nice. It does have boat transportation to Disney Springs and bus transportation to all of the parks. Disney Saratoga Springs is right across from Disney Springs. You've probably seen it. 
It has all the different colored buildings and it's themed to kind of like the steeplechase and horse racing and it is a very large resort as well. It is within walking distance of Disney Springs which is really nice and it has boat transportation to Disney Springs and a bus transportation to all of the parks. All right so now we're going to talk about the moderate hotels. These hotels still have a slide in the swimming pool area as the value resorts do not and they usually have one table service restaurant and a few quick service restaurants. The first we're going to talk about is in the Epcot Resort area and this is Caribbean Beach. So it's a little more spread out as with all of the moderate hotels they tend to be spread out into different buildings. So you might have a long walk to your room. You can request when you check in you can request rooms that are closer to the lobby or closer to transportation if you want. This resort is themed Caribbean. It's the Caribbean Beach Resort so it's very beach themed and it has Sebastian's Bistro, which just opened a couple years ago, which is a restaurant. I've been wanting to go there, haven't been yet. It just reopened from the pandemic. And now you can have Skyliner transportation or bus transportation to Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom. In the Animal Kingdom area is Coronado Springs. This is my favorite moderate hotel. It just got redone with a new Grand Destino Tower, which is gorgeous. This tower feels more like a deluxe resort but because the rest of the resort is moderate and is split into all the little buildings it still is a moderate resort so there's technically two different resorts kind of that you can book here you can book a tower room these are going to be more expensive but it's going to be more like a typical hotel room where your door opens to the inside to a hotel hallway you can have a view of like magic kingdom in the distance and see fireworks from there there's a restaurant on the top of it as well and a bar at the bottom of the tower. But the rest of the resort still feels like a moderate hotel. They're nice rooms. They've just been redone recently. But the doors do open to the outside like other moderate hotels. And it's going to be a long walk to get to wherever you want to go. There are multiple bus stops at this hotel. So make sure you know where your closest bus stop is so you're not walking more than you have to. This hotel is themed to the southwest and kind of has a Spanish influence to it and it has some really good restaurants as well. It's also a convention center but it's also just a really cool hotel. The Disney Springs area moderate hotels are Port Orleans French Quarter and Port Orleans Riverside. This is themed to New Orleans so there's one side of it it's one hotel but it's two different hotels kind of and one side is themed to the French Quarter and the other side is themed more toward the Garden District, the Riverside but they share restaurants and it's just a gorgeous hotel. This used to be where you could get beignets and they did have gluten-free beignets. This resort is a boat ride from Disney Springs and then you can take a bus to get to any Disney park. Magic Kingdom area moderate hotel is not really a hotel, it's the cabins at Fort Wilderness. So Fort Wilderness is a campsite so it falls under the campsite category which isn't value it's campsite but they do have cabins that you can stay in these are more rustic cabins that'll feel more like you're camping at a park but there is bus transportation and boat transportation to magic kingdom bus transportation to any of the other parks and if you're just looking for something a little quieter and different from staying at a disney hotel then this is definitely the option for you they do have dog friendly cabins so you can bring your dog with you and it's just a different experience than staying at one of the hotels. I'll also talk about the campsites. They have campsites where you can camp or bring your RV. I've seen videos and people go all out for the holidays. People have races there. Like I'll run Disney people, I'll mark out on chalk different distances and people will run around the campsites. They have Christmas lights and everything, trick or treating over there and it's just a really cool experience to be a part of this resort area campgrounds i don't know but if you're looking for something different or if you have an rv and are wanting to use it when you travel i would definitely recommend looking at fort wilderness campgrounds in the hollywood studios area is art of animation art of animation is a sister hotel kind of to pop century they're right across the lake from each other but art of animation has a really cool life-size uh, characters from Little Mermaid, Lion King, Cars. It's really pretty. I've seen pictures I need to go visit but it looks so cool. See those characters that are huge statues and just the areas of the hotel are themed so well. All of the rooms do open to the outside. There is a pool but there is no water slide so value resorts do not have water slides so if you're looking for that you need to book moderate or above. There's a food court area, there is not a table service restaurant, but there is quick service. 
and now there's the Skyliner. So Art of Animation has bus transportation to Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom, and it has Skyliner transportation to get to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Across the lake from Art of Animation is Pop Century. Pop Century is themed to the different centuries in the past few years. So you have the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, and it has larger than life props of things that were common during that time. It's a really cool themed resort. I'm staying here this fall. I'm very excited to see it. And again, it's on the Skyliner. It has Skyliner transportation to Hollywood Studios and Epcot and bus transportation to Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom. In Animal Kingdom area, value resorts are the all-stars. So there's all-star movies, all-star music, and all-star sports. These are going to be the least expensive hotels on Disney property. They are still fantastic hotels. They also only have queen beds. They've recently redone most of these hotels so that there is a permanent queen bed and then a pull down Murphy queen bed. There's plenty of room in these resorts. I really liked it when it had been redone. It felt very modern. It had hardwood floors and just felt very clean. These hotel rooms do open to the outside and it can be a kind of long walk depending on which block of rooms you're in to get to the lobby. They each have a pool as well and some really cool theming. So movies has larger than life characters from like Toy Story and 101 Dalmatians. Music has themes from different types of music. So they'll have like giant maracas or some drums. And then sports has sports equipment. All of these resorts have their own food court and they have a gift shop as well. And all of them have a bus transportation to get to all of the parks and Disney Springs. So how do you know which resort to choose with so many to choose from? Well, first off, your budget can determine a lot of that. So you need to determine if your budget's in the deluxe, the moderate, or the value range. I will say I've stayed in deluxe hotels, I've stayed in value hotels, and honestly, the rooms are very similar. Unless you're staying in a villa, then the rooms are kinda gonna be the same. It all depends on how much time you're gonna spend at your resort. If you're not planning on spending any time at your resort at all, and you're just gonna be using it for sleeping, then I would say don't spend the money to stay in a deluxe hotel because you're not gonna be in your room that much. So you might as well go for a value hotel. If you're looking something a little more moderate range, kind of have a few of the amenities, but not quite as much, then I would go with a moderate hotel. Also just what theming you're looking for and what parks you wanna be close to, what transportation you want. There's a lot of different options. So have a look on the Disney website, make sure you see what's available for your date ranges because sometimes some hotels aren't available some days and just have fun looking at all the different hotels. I love looking through and seeing all the different themes of the hotels and just how the rooms look. Disney has done a fantastic job with the theming on their hotels and it's just really cool to stay in one of their hotels. Next week I'm going to be discussing Disney Springs so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. Thank y'all so much for watching, wear your sunscreen, stay hydrated, and we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.